Welcome back here on Prime Morning. We're excited that you're still here with us and uh, the issue of IMF, we're getting into it. And well, uh, we're, we're going to follow up and check out what exactly on Wednesday, uh, if that meeting happens, uh, what exactly is going to come up for that meeting. We're definitely going to make sure we update you here on the show. We'll continue the conversation on the other side, but make sure you continue to join us here on the show. We're on social media. We're streaming live on Facebook. We're on Instagram, on Twitter as Joy Prime TV. Make sure you send in your comments, your thoughts, Thoughts about uh, all the conversation we're having here on the show. Now we turn our attention to let's talk this morning, and we're looking at uh, the bigger picture. Now you know going to the IMF comes with its consequences and other things that would definitely be a problem for the ordinary Ghanaian that is living and trying as much as possible to you know um, um, get to uh, have a better life, if you want to put it that way. But. There are so many things that are involved, and uh, this morning we want to take our attention to it and see how best we can, you know, have uh, that conversation that will tilt towards uh, making us have a way of strategizing our lives and assessing uh, what situation we are in at the moment. In the studio with me, I've got uh, in here uh, Petra Abba Asamoah, is a marketing practitioner and author. Uh, she's going to be helping us uh, look at the, you know, uh, mid-year assessment and re strategizing, and uh, hopefully. You know, we get to, uh, you know, look at things around us and see how best we can make life better for us. And also in the studio with me, I have Skofri. Uh, he's also uh, here with me. He's uh, a life coach and uh, he's also going to be focusing on how we can uh, together uh, motivate ourselves into making sure that we are able to, you know, keep ourselves going in this very, very, very uh, difficult times that we we'll find ourselves in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show. Uh, good morning you. to you. Thank you. Good morning. Everything cool? Uh, it's awesome. Uh, what, what am I even asking? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's <laughs> not as cool as we, 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 we're hoping to actually have in the country. Now, let, let me begin from you. Um, how do you see the situation we we'll find ourselves in right now as a country? I'm sure there are a lot of things that every single person out there has to be looking at right now moving forward. But in your opinion, how, how do you see things now? Well, good morning. Um, if we want to talk about what's happening in the larger um, scheme of things, I'm sure every individual will have a perspective. Mm. And typically, you want to look at what's going on around you, but how it impacts on your pockets. Yep. And <laughs> um, for me, <laughs> as, a, as a regular Ghanaian, you feel that indeed things have changed. Um, but the question is, how can you adapt? How can you ensure that you're making the best out of your situation? How can you ensure that you're living your best life mm. in spite of the situations around you? Because um, I'm sure that for all of us sitting here this morning, we've always, we've lived here for as long as we, we've been yeah. around. Mm. And there's never really been a point where there's been no situation. Mm -hmm. So even in our organizations, wherever, whatever we do, there's always going to be that place where you, you think about resources being scarce, resources not being enough to meet your, all your needs and your wants. Yeah. But how do you adapt? So for me, that's, that's the, the more important issue. How do individuals rise to the occasion and ensure that in spite of the situations around them, they still um, live the life that they, they should live? Mm. We're going to get deeper into that, mm -hmm. but let me come to uh, Skofi and Ayabwa and find out. Uh, is, do you share the same sentiment or you've been a transformational coach, maybe it's not really hitting you like the way it's hitting everybody <laughs> because you, you are the one motivating us. So if we are down, you should be there. Well, um, good morning to your cherished viewers. Um, Petra, nice meeting you. Same here. Um, I, I share in a sentiment of um, uh, Petra and from the depth of the things we do or from our school of thought. Whatever is happening, for instance, um, in our coaching school in ontology, we're discussing how has COVID mm. shaped our humanity. Whether we like it or not, mm. something occurred to Please us. Please try and project for me. Okay. Something occurred to mm. all of us mm. due to COVID. Yeah. And we were not out of the woods. And here is another situation called Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. And to us in the development or developing world, now we are being hit. When you get to a point where goodwill is broken, when you get to the point where trust mm. is broken, you get the people to shift to spaces where, one, because we are, we are human beings and not human doings, our makeup from our autonomic nervous system, which takes care of 
stress, mm. depression. Now, most of us do things going okay. People are, people are going to get hyper. Mm. Okay, that is our sympathetic system. It's going to go hyper. Because you want to fight and keep on fighting and keep on fighting and you want to, want to be productive and everything. There are others to the shock who get them to wind down into depression. Mm. And that is the, the moment where we need leadership. And our body is designed also in, in the area of resilience, for instance, for wisdom to prevail. To prevail. Okay. So at this particular time, it is very important for us to pursue wisdom so that the body will come to a certain point of congruency to allow us to decide based on the knowledge available mm. to what is pertaining. There are a third group of people who will still be in the denial, and they are the most dangerous ones I fear okay. to even be around. The denial because of loyalty, blind loyalty, that nothing of this sort is happening. Mm. Then we run away from the reality. And most often, I know there's something we call like reframing. So whatever is happening, it's a wake-up call yeah. from top to bottom. Well, like I agree with Petra. Whatever also that is happening there, you the individual, two things is going to occur. Is your body going to see through the situation as opportunity emerging? Or you are going to see through it as problem that can block you from coming forth to become the best of yourself. So this is where we are. This is where we are. Now, you can also send in your thoughts. Uh, and uh, a bit later, we'll try and see if we can open the phone lines for you to share, uh, you know, your sentiments with us here on the show. I've got uh, Scofrey in the studio. I've got Petra also here with me. We're taking a look at uh, the situation we find ourselves in, trying to assess ourselves, re-strategize, and see how best we can continue to even survive in the first place. Now, survival is the thing right now. But in a situation where someone has been living a certain lifestyle, and now you're faced with this. It's a struggle for everybody. How do we now try and look at it from the other side? So the first thing you need to do is not fret. So don't become, don't um, react instantly. Yeah, That's the first thing. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my first advice is pause. We need to just take a step back and pause. Let's think about what we did during the outbreak of COVID. Mm. Um, the, the running helter skelter really doesn't help anybody when you're in a situation of trouble, quote on, um, for want of a better phrase. Pause. So just pause. Calm down. <laughs> and then look at what your current situation is. Mm. Look at what you do have available. And again, I want to really focus on what is rather than what is not. What do you have? So you earn a thousand CDs a month. And you're saying that six months ago, a thousand CDs could um, give you this type of lifestyle. A thousand cities now may not be able to give you that type of lifestyle you had six months ago, but yeah. what can it do? Take stock of that. And the most important thing I would say is that begin to cut your coats according mm. to your material, not according to your size. That would be very useful now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have um, two yards of fabric and I sell cloth, you need to be able to recognize what type of style can this sew for me. Mm. It, it might not necessarily sew a long gown like you would have wanted to, it to do six months ago, but mm. what can it do for you now? So figure out what can I do now? Another very important practical thing to do is you need to cut back on the non-essentials. Okay, some of the things are nice to have. Some of, of the things that we do are luxury things, but we need to ask ourselves, what are the important things that we need to, to have? What are the important things we need to do? For instance, we're thinking about the cost of fuel, and everyone is saying the cost of, well, the cost of fuel has gone up. What can we do? Non-essential travel, non-essential trips. Um, if it's not important, you can cut it out. Mm. Is it possible that you can carpool with colleagues at work? Can you cut down on some of the rounds? Um, Google Maps is very useful to helping you cut down on routes that um, yeah. have traffic. So things like that, adapt um, solutions that help you live within your means. And that, for me, is the key thing. You need to figure out how to live within your means. When you're outside of what you're able to do, stress becomes an issue. Mm. And stress is a natural phenomenon of life, but you can manage it. So if, you're not, if it's not important, it's not necessary, you can cut back on it. And one of the biggest um, stresses now in our generation, I'm sure Scofrey will agree, is this penchant to want to catch up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. to want to be like everyone mm -hmm. else, to want to live a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Take stock of yourself. 
and decide for yourself what your life journey is, where you should be, what you can do, and just focus on that. Because if you want to um, mark yourself according to other people, of course you're going to find people who are more better than you, yeah. you're going to find people who, are, who you're better than, and all of those things create either a false sense of, of um, success or false sense of importance. Mm. So focus on yourself. What am I? Where am I heading? Where am I now? And how can I get there? One other thing you may also want to consider is looking at your life as a marathon instead of a sprint. Mm. If you think about life as a 100-meter dash, of course you're going to think, I need to do it now, I need to do everything now. But think about it as a long-term journey. If you think five, ten years ahead when you're planning your life, when you have short-term obstacles or limitations, you try to view them as not too um, detrimental or too limiting. You view yeah. them as temporary setbacks. If you don't have that long-term view of your life and you're thinking about everything in the now, then of course you, you, you get more flustered and more stressed when things don't go right. But think about life as a long-term journey. Think about how you, you're planning your life for five years, three years, five years, 10 years. And I'm sure people will say, how can we think about long term when even now <laughs> we can't survive? <laughs> but that's the thing though. Yeah. If you look back, you have stories of how you went through very difficult situations. Yeah. In the moment, you didn't, you didn't realize how you were surviving, but yeah. you did. Yeah. And that's how we've been programmed. Our bodies, our minds, our souls have been programmed in a way that we can survive things even when we don't think we can. Mm. So go back into your past and draw strength from the things that you've been able to do and tell yourself, this is temporary, this is not going to be it forever, yeah. and I'm going to make it past it. But all of the, um, the tools that we need are programmed already in us, that's one thing. And if we don't have the tools that we need, we recognize we need, we can learn them. Okay, so one of the, the tools that we need in a time like this is being able to budget and manage your finances properly. If you've been someone who just takes their salary, puts it in their pockets and blows it over the weekend, in trouble. <laughs> this is the time to find the right tools to yeah. help you budget. And budgeting doesn't have to be complex. It can be as simple as writing down how much you earn, how much you need to spend on the essentials and how much you can save or invest. And again, I'm sure people will say, how can we save now? You can always save. By we'll cutting down. Uh, because, I mean, the, 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 the man that is always looking at how he's going to look in the office, you know, how he's going to go to work and come back, and now going to that fix and how to budget and make sure they are also saving. That's a big deal. But <laughs> let, let me come to you, Skofri. Now, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm there. I don't know what I'm about. It's not easy like that. But let's look at it. As she mentioned that um, we need to cut down certain lifestyle. I mean, there are certain things that you think that you've been doing before, and now you can't do it. You need to have a way to cut it down. Now, you transforming people's life in one way or the other. How do we go about now on learning things that we have learned, life we have left, style we have actually enjoyed. Now we need to leave that space and try to accommodate a certain lifestyle that we don't want to live. How do we transform to that lifestyle? Well, um, the, the coach in me will quickly want to ask a question. Mm. And maybe let me put it to you for the want of a client. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be willing to answer. <laughs> so. so when I ask you, where are you now mm. in your life? What will be your answer? Um, don't, don't think it. Okay. Don't think it. Be it. The moment we start living so much here, which is where all of us, we are living a lot. We are living so much here. Mm. So like she said, the stresses and everything, because we are living so much here. So when I ask you, where are you now in the space of your life? It calls for the first impulse. So that you don't give me cognitive answer. Mm. Because if you pause, your entire body will adduce the truthful answer to give, which becomes an awareness to yourself. Okay. So we call it the knowledge, your epistemology, your, the knowledge you have now of where you are, who you are, what you have become. Mm. Because in all this that is occurring, we are still individuals. So where are you now in the space of things? That is the first fundamental question you need to ask yourself in, in looking at where we are now as, yeah. as a country. Where are you now in where we are as a nation? What knowledge do you have 
of where you are now versus where even the nation is. Mm. Then, then you move to come to the point like I agree again with Petra. What are you conscious of? What are you conscious? Because to reprogram the 90% or 95% of our subconsciousness, you need the 5% of the consciousness. Mm. To bring alert to your being as that pause. And you said something to, to, to unlearn. It is the most difficult phenomenon for the human body, yeah. unlearning. Because our roots, which is the behavior, what we call being and having it, is, has served us in a certain way for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And because your body is a memory, it has recorded how that situation served you. Yeah. But I thank God and I, I am so excited about how even still our human body is still hardwired. That even in the face of all this, if only you can pause and become conscious of what is occurring mm. and begin to alter the, the, the patterns that your body have recorded and say, pause. We used to spend this much. Fuel has gone up. Dollar is running like you same boat. Prices of goods are going up. May I even need to alter my food? When I eat, what I wear, when I wear them. Petra says something, people in a haste of competition. Mm. Who are in your enclave and how they influence you? Today we're not talking about mastermind, but let me bring in that a bit. Yeah. That when us we've met like this, a third mind is occurring. And a third mind is what we are all bringing to the pool unconsciously, mm -hmm. from our subconscious to the table. So if the people you find yourself in their league are not emitting wisdom in, you will find yourself stranded. It, that is how come even when you take water, you don't get satisfied. Mm. That is how come you are eating too much because there is some hunger in here that you'd rather think it's here, so you need to live the life that pleases other people. Yeah. But no. So you will need to begin to shape your network. I call it your network thing. Have you been able to audit? Okay, I need Petra in my life. Mm -hmm. What would I gain from Petra, even when I put a call to her? Be strategic. Yeah. You're not going to shower blame and the difficulty you know. Petra, at this point in my life, I'm thinking about doing something about market ABCD. What do you think I need to do? Mm. She comes in and drops her professional acumen in there. You call somebody in law. So, shape. But all will come with a question, where are you now? Until you know where you are now. Have the knowledge of where you are now. And the consciousness of where you are now. I'm sorry. We're not going anywhere. No. Petra, I'm, I'm curious. Now, I want to know, is this the time and period for us to now start doing more business than we have. Uh, it could be petty business. It could be any, something that can transform into becoming very huge. Do we have now have to struggle or be in a mad rush to increasing the number of jobs that we're doing? Mad rush, no. Um, okay, yeah. But the best time to start anything was yesterday. The second best time is today. So we are dead? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, not yet. <laughs> no, we are not. So, yes, I am definitely an advocate for multiple streams of income. Mm. Um, there, are, there are more things that we can do to generate income for ourselves than we usually do. Mm. And for the individual, again, pause and take stock yeah. and ask yourself, what am I good at? What are the things that come naturally to me? It mm. may not even be the th what you're doing as a job. It can be something that you can monetize on the side. And this is not the time to just say, okay, I don't like my job. I'm stopping to go and do uh. something else. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't just, don't, don't be hasty. Don't be impulsive. Mm. Plan properly. So let me give a good example. You may be in a, like yourself. There's so many things you can do to make extra money that might not even um, take, will not take your mind off your work. Yeah. So once you're done with your job here, there are other things you can do. There are other skill sets that you have that you have to find a way to monetize them. And it may not come immediately, mm. but you have to have a plan. Again, that's why I say have a strategic plan for your life. If you're able to take stock and say, this is where I am now, this is where I want to get to, what do I need to get there? A good way of monetizing your talent, for instance, is putting it in printable material. 
publishing your work. Mm. So you know how to present on TV. I'm sure you do other things with your voice. How can you put that together to extend it beyond your immediate environment? That's one of the things. And writing a book, for instance, or doing, um, um, starting a podcast or a YouTube channel doesn't just happen. Mm. You have to plan it and execute it properly. So there are so many things that you can do. But again, it takes you being able to plan properly so you can execute it well. Mm. Okay, so that's, that's one of the things. Because yes. not being careful and failing can also be very depressive. Yes. Especially with the times that yes. we find but ourselves failing, in. But failing is also part of the learning process. True. I think that generally as a culture, we've demonized failure. Mm. So that when people fail, they're not able to come back from their failure. But mm. failure should be perceived as part of learning. So what didn't I do well? If you can see it as... I tried something, it didn't turn out well. Can I backtrack, re retrace my steps and see if I was supposed to go right, I rather went left and that's what caused it. So let me go back to that junction and take the right turn instead of the left turn. It's more progressive than mm. seeing failure as bad, which is a problem in our society. So when people start a venture and six months down the line, we don't see them, we laugh. You say, oh, they tried it and they failed. Yeah. But now they know what not to do. So again, back to the individual. Think about failure as part of your learning process, as what not to do later, as learning how to be better. Think about it as phases of life. So the young person who is doing national service now or NAPCO or whatever they are doing and is thinking, I don't really like what I'm doing. I'm not being very productive. There's no experience that is wasted. What you're doing, sitting at the front desk, and I worked in the front desk in my first job. And some of the things I learned then are useful to me now. Mm. Being calm in the face of um, difficult customers, um, being able to manage multiple people when they walk into to you at the same time. So you're on the phone, someone walks in, you have an email, what do you do? All of that type of experience comes into play later on in life. So don't think about your struggle as this is a struggle, it's it's weigh me down, I'm going, to, I'm going to collapse under it. It's part of life. Mm. So view life, again, I said view life as a marathon with different phases. Sometimes you're on the mountain, you're having a high. Sometimes you're in the valley, you're having a really low moment. But think about it as these are transitions. And as I transition through the different phases of my life, I'm going to go through different things. But I am equipped, I can be equipped to face it and to survive. And not just to survive, but to also thrive. Mm. And you agree with me that failing in an IMF situation <laughs> is, is more depressing <laughs> than failing in an uh, ordinary, um, you know, uh, without IMF, of course. You know that there are a lot of things that you can do for yourself, but when you know you're in the IMF situation and you are failing, that can be a bit, bit depressing. Let's, let's look at the positive side of things. Mm -hmm. How is this going to make us better? Mm -hmm. How is this going to improve our situation? I know there's the politics of it, there's the general yeah. conversation, but let's go back to what is this going to mean for us? Um, there, there's, even in, in situations of war, people make money. Yeah. In COVID, people made money. Yeah. So it's you just pausing, like Scofie said, what are the opportunities here? What can I make out of this situation? And it does take some intentional introspection and it does take extra work. Because whilst everyone is screaming and shouting and saying nothing is working, people are making money. Absolutely. Yeah. That's very true. Now, Skofri, let me get back to you and find out who are some of the friends we're supposed to be keeping in times like this? Who are those that we have to let them go? <laughs> um, I think recently I did a post on Facebook. I think uh, 11 bulleted point or 12, 10 or so, the kind of people I'm keeping in my circle. Mm. Um, one, of, one of the people I'm keeping in my circle, one of them, or the category, one, people who are in places I'm in pursuit of reaching. Mm. So um, I have amazing global coaches in my network, mm. keeping them on my social media to be able to glean from them, from Thailand, from the US, from the UK. Um, I participate in our monthly breathwork exercise from my alumni in the US. I have my master in bit coaches. So people who are at a destination that I'm in pursuit of, I keep them in my league. I also keep people who have diverse capabilities than my core area. There are some people when they speak on finance, you go like, wow, this is beautiful. I 
I have no love with figures. But the fact that the way they will handle the contest or the subject matter, you see, triggers my deeper abilities. Because when you are with people who resonate in certain frequencies, mm. it also triggers your deeper self to rise up in that frequency. Yeah. So that is the second category of people that I keep. Three, even people who have doubt about what I can do, mm who might have spiked me before in the past, I still keep them there. Oh. Because they remind me of a period where I wasn't too good to certain people. Mm. Then I also keep people who know where I'm coming from. This morning when I got a friend, my schoolmate, senior high school called me, and I said, I thank God for people like you. Mm. And then it's deliberate, I keep them there. Then I also have people who can look me in the face out of love and confront me and say, you are not being. Mm. that which you promised you are not being that which you've spoken so much about that means my integrity they are holding me or holding my feet to my own thoughts and beingness of integrity mm. and they are mostly the few people who hold your feet to integrity that no Scoffrey, you are not being that which you have been talking about all these years they are, the, they are more or less the mirrors that you want to keep within your, your space and spheres. So there are many of them. It is important for you to tailor your environment. The environment is so critical. The, the environment you create, not the external one, is so mission critical that it allows you. Messi and Ronaldo are the best we know because they play within 90 minutes. Play them after two hours. You will see horrible stuff. Mm. So you need to be able to create an environment that will allow you to still play to the, we call it the rules of engagement, but you can dazzle in your giftings. Mm. You need to create that environment. I, I don't keep larger friends. I want friendship that when we sit like that, I know something will care. Yeah. I know we can glean. I know I can be vulnerable. Recently, one of the greatest research, researchers, um, Stephen Borges, he said that in actual sense, Creativity thrives when love is the space, not when we are in a haste like yeah. this. Creativity won't work. We only become productive, but we don't peak perform mm. because there is the absence of love. So when even your own self-love to come to the understanding of who you are is not there, when your mental is so low, when you want to live like other people, you don't know what I have survived to come to this significance but you are fixated about my significance. You won't get it. Mm. But when you are able for us to exchange and talk, Petra is doing this here, Scoffer is doing that there, and we are able to share our candid experience, not, not the massage one, mm. not the ones that come as um, like energy drinks, mm -hmm. not, not those ones, <laughs> because people need food supplement to sustain the body. So if your environment is full of energy drinks, but no nutritional supplement. And remember the environment, you are part of it. Mm. So what do you bring to the table yeah. for your own self? And the lastly, what I would say is that whatever you say, interestingly, your body also listens. There are some of us, your body don't trust you. Mm. A lot of us, our body does not even trust us because we say something different and we do the other. And in our doing measures, who we claim we are being, and in the self-deceit. So when we can do the proper, I don't call it troubleshooting anymore, significant shooting, because if you can identify that you have some significance on this earth, manating from the purpose you have discovered, you will begin to look for ways that you can love the life you live without being through any pressure. Petra, now we, we have people that <laughs> one way or the other depend on us. Um, we all know it's hardship for everybody. At this moment, who are some of the people we're supposed to help when they need us? Mm. And those who are supposed to say that, you know, I could have done it, but now I, I have not in the capacity to do it. I know it's gonna come with a lot of uh, backlash from people who are, you are not able to help and some of the things they say to you, but we have to all make sure that we're, we're surviving. How do we go about that? So fragrance sticks on the hands of the one who extends the rose. Absolutely. If you're giving someone something, you benefit from it as well. Mm. So I am a strong advocate of being a channel of blessing yeah. as much as you can. Um, and you can plan that blessing. 
Okay. So you don't say that, um, again, back to the 1,000 CD income. I earn 1,000 CDs. I have to give out all of, all of my 1,000 CDs just to prove that I'm a giver. A lot of people do that. Yeah. That, that's one way. Mm. Mm. Think about what you can, you can do. And that's the thing about giving. Sometimes it has to be sacrificial. Mm. It has to be sacrificial to make meaning. So um, in a family situation where you are the one who supports maybe your younger siblings or an auntie or an uncle in a particular um, endeavor, it's not necessarily the time to just say you're cutting them off. You can have a conversation with them. So if you're paying school fees, are there parts of the, the school fees bill that can be shaved off that are not necessarily um, need to have? They're not essential. So maybe the, the, the child or the individual is attending some extracurricular activity that is not core to the curriculum. Can that be discounted? Can it be um, pushed to another time? You can have conversations like that. But again, we need to be upfront with people who depend on us. And I'm a parent of three children. Mm. If you can't afford something, it's important to let your children know that you can't afford it. Mm. Don't create um, a perception of what you are not to children. Whether they're your children or other people's children, but they depend on you. Let them know. And children have, they're wise. They, 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 have, <laughs> they have sense. Yeah. Mm. They know when you, when you are being truthful to them. If, if mommy or daddy is being truthful, they can perceive, they're perceptive, they know. Children, even children from a very young age. So explain to them. One of the things I've done with my children is when we're going out to the mall or whatever, we go with a list. Okay. And from a very young age, I've always told them, this is the list, this is what we're going to buy. If you want anything outside of this list, we'll have a conversation. So I used to do something when um, my two older ones were quite young. I'll tell them, okay, you have a budget of maybe five CDs. Mm -hmm. And you can buy a drink or buy something, but five CDs is your budget. Mm. And sometimes they come back to negotiate and say, Mommy, can I have two CDs extra? <laughs> or, or can I, I'm buying something for three CDs. Can I keep the two CDs with you for later? Mm. So you can have those conversations with them. So be real with the, the, the group of people that you're interacting with. Let them know. Don't do things outside of your means just to prove a point. Mm. But also don't not sacrifice. Love sacrifices. Love gives sometimes even when it's inconvenient. But let it be love. Let it not be fear. Mm -hmm. There are things we do out of fear. What do people say? Yeah. If I don't go to that wedding, yes, if I don't go to that wedding, I don't wear the cloth everybody is wearing to that funeral, they'll say, maybe I'm broke. That's fear. Do it out of love. Do it because Scrofi is my friend and he's having this particular event. And I really feel that if I show up there, it will mean a lot to him. So yeah. I'm going to show up. Mm. Don't say, if I don't go to his event, he won't come to mine. Like people say, <laughs> if I don't go to a funeral, when I die, nobody no, will show up. Yeah. Well, you won't know when they don't show up. Yeah. You know, but do it out of love. Don't mm. do it out of fear of what society thinks or what society will say. Do it out of love. So if you're showing up for people in your network, let it be, be because... You love them, they are important to you. And if you do it out of love, it's easier, even when it's from a place of sacrifice. It's much, much, much easier than doing it out of fear and saying, I'm not sure what they will say, let me just go, even though I don't want to be there. So have, have honest conversations with the people around. And as you, you continue to present your authentic self, the people who depend on you know. Mm. They know when you don't have it, you don't have it. When you have it, you have it. Because they know that when he says, I do, I'm going to do it. Yeah. They know that when you say you won't do it, you won't do it. And they know that when you say you won't do it, it's not because you just want to be wicked, yeah. but there's actually a situation. So your authentic self is better presented all the time, but even more in situations like this. Mm. So we've done uh, the, the, the assessment for this mid-year, and we're looking at uh, economics speaking about the fact that we've been more hard times mm. In the, in the coming months ahead of us. Now, projections into it, I want to find out from you, Scofri, uh, what, what are some of the things that we're supposed to be doing before the year runs out? Because that's where more hardship will be coming anyway. I mean, unless by miracle something happens and everything changes. But uh, projections into it, what are we supposed to be looking at? I think the first thing um, we need to look at basically is first you the individual, what is the total summation of your mindset of what is occurring? What is the total summation? I'm choosing my words very carefully. I'm not saying what your total thinking. Mm -hmm. Say a total summation. 
because there is the when the situation occur, let's say, what do you feel about it? There is what do you think about it? What is the experience about it? When you're able to find some answers to some of these questions, it propels you into how you will be. Because behavior, behavior, behavior and stuff, it comes from beingness. So if you will need to begin to have frank conversations, like Petra said, with people in your circle, you need to start. Learn to say no. Mm. Mm. Because a lot of times saying no is actually a evidence of self-love. Okay. Because I can't give you what I don't have. Mm. I can't give you what I can't give to myself. So learn to also say no in this, in this moment in time. Three, situations that you overcame in the past, don't bring the event, bring the experience to now. Mm. That is what resilience actually is. Mm. Don't bring the event. Bring the experience that aided you to navigate that situation. Bring it now because your body knows that memory. You, only, you are only now redirecting the memory to a different path so that your body will coordinate all the wisdom that is stored in there for you. Become conscious of who is speaking into your life. It is mission critical because words are powerful. Who is speaking into your life? It boils back to your network. Mm. Then uh, three, one of the things I, I say to people is, before you pick a phone to call somebody for your need, troubleshoot your need. Is it really, really needful? What have you been able to do about it? Petra, I have a project that is worth a uh, hundred, uh, uh, let's say thousand um, dollars. I'm currently stuck. I've been able to raise six hundred dollars out of it. I don't know if you can help me with $200. Mm. You see? You give her the space. We call it epigenetics. You give her the space to respond or react. And she would definitely respond because you've given her the space where response is what is required. But look at this. Petra, Charlie, the project I did do, no, Charlie, it be $1,000. So, but me, self, I don't get one, I don't get one set, self. Charlie, go give me $500. <laughs> you, that is your project. You, that is your challenge. You, that is your situation. The only effort you are bringing to the table is empty palm. Yeah, mm. see you. Yeah. How do I come in to support you? Because the moment you think you are only going through something, if you are human being enough, know that we are all going through something. So it will take my love to go out of my way to squeeze perhaps something that should have benefited my family, knowing that maybe it will go a long way. But give me... A substance of meeting me halfway. So, so if you have a need and you are calling on people, begin to assess. Because people present wants as though it's need. Mm. You want to wear that flag because you've planned some some pote B, you plan some thing B, <laughs> and you're and they're crying, you're in a hospital now. Or, or, so can you send me some? And you you see, you lie in the in the receiving it cop and I, I don't want to say this. Our neurology, our body knows it. This is how we've, we've trained our bodies to be deceitful, individually. So we need to come out of our shelves and, and begin to show leadership. We call it personal leadership. Begin to lead yourself. Lead. Cut your coat according to the size of your material. Petra, I've said it already. And we make it so sound literally. But it is, it is practical. You will not cut your coat, but you want me to bring you my, my cabas sleeves to fix on your own <laughs> so that I will look like I'm giving. No, that, that, that blind compassion is, is, is dangerous. Mm. There's something we call authentic compassion. Authentic compassion. You say you are broke, ne? Would you want to do this minia job for the minute to mark time and take that mega salary? Yeah. Oh, no, I have a degree in this one. I, I, I'm, I'm above that. Yeah. Fine. Then I have the same degree. I'm doing that same yeah, thing. Right. And it is out of that you want me to give you my, my one P. Yeah. There's something wrong here. 
There's something wrong here. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to be going. But I've enjoyed this very conversation. I'm sure you also did enjoy it. And uh, you've picked one or two from that, and you're going to use that to better yourself uh, in trying to survive uh, the hardships that we find ourselves in at the moment. Uh, any quick thing you want to say before we go? Take personal responsibility. Um, in whatever situation you find yourself, just decide that I am responsible for the outcome of this situation and plan your, your movement from that point. And that's a picture. Uh, I, I, I am happy because now, no matter how small you have, I know that you can save and, uh, you know, make something better out of it. And I'm excited about that. We're, we're hoping that we won't be in this situation for the longest. Yeah. It, yes. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like, <laughs> it doesn't look like that, right? No, I, I agree with Petra to the point that in every, for me, it is your worldview to what is occurring. Yeah, if it. it is a problem, it's a block. Yeah. But if I see it as a challenge, I can go around Run it, it yeah. and get the best out of it. So be the author of your own story. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's uh, Skofrin and Ayabua. He's the transformational coach. Join me over here in the morning of uh, conversation. Thank you so much for coming through. We appreciate you. Okay. And uh, Petra Abba Asamwa also joined us this morning. She is a marketing and practitioner, uh, marketing practitioner and an author as well. And uh, you can definitely uh, link up with them on social media. Make sure you go and check them out and learn from there. Uh, Skofrin has been putting out a lot of things over there. And Abba has been doing the same as well. So make sure you actually go on their pages and uh, learn a lot of things from there. Many thanks for coming through once again. I appreciate you guys.